up guys, hope you're doing well and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are gonna be talking a little bit about protocols in Swift 4. So we're gonna be going over what a protocol is, why they're important and how they help us out, when and where to implement protocols in your code, and then we're gonna be doing an example of how to implement protocols in a couple different situations so you guys can gain a better understanding of how this stuff works. So I have a, a practice application up here on the screen that's sort of like a follow uh, app that you would see in Instagram. And we're gonna be using a protocol to implement the functionality to follow or unfollow users. And then I'm gonna be showing you uh, the use of protocols in a couple different apps that I've built so that we can uh, really gain like the full spectrum understanding of how and why protocols are used and why they're important. So let's go ahead and get started with Xcode now. All right guys, so I have the entire project set up um, with everything apart from the implementation of the protocol that we're going to be uh, working on here. So I'm just going to do a brief run through of everything, explain what's going on so you guys uh, have an understanding of the project before we move forward with implementing our protocol. So we have this uh, view controller file here, which is the controller for this main screen. It's a table view controller and we are populating each one of these cells with a user and this user is um, our model up here and it's a struct and we just give it these properties, a username, which we see here, full name, which we see there, profile image, and then a Boolean variable to determine whether or not that user is followed. So um, I have this user cell here, which contains all of the properties, the like the view components. And um, this is, so the declaration of all those view components. And then in our init method, we use, uh, we programmatically add them to our sub view. We programmatically create each one of these views. And then um, we have this handler here for the handle follow tap button. And we see that it just prints out, um, let me see, one, two, three to our console when we hit it. So um, back to our view controller, um, I have this function to set up all of our users. It just uh, sets each user up one by one manually. Um, in a real application, you would be pulling this data in from an API, but for the purposes of this project, we're just gonna do this stuff manually. All the images are located in the um, assets folder. And then we just append each user to our array, which we have up here. And then we use that array to configure our table view right here. So uh, that should be pretty familiar to a lot of you guys if um, you're watching this video. Uh, I'm not going to get into a super detailed explanation of that process because it's not the purpose of this video. I do have um, a Pokedex series though where I get into a lot more detail about how to do this stuff with a collection view which is really similar to a table view. So if you don't understand what's going on here, I recommend checking out my video series on how to create a Pokedex app which uh, is right here. So. Uh, now let's uh, get started with what we need to do to implement our protocol and talk about why we need to use a protocol. So uh, let me hop in here and uh, it's helpful to just pause the video and read the definition of what a protocol is here. And uh, right now we are going to jump into our code and start implementing it. So before we do that, let's talk about why. So uh, in this user cell class, is where we have uh, the declaration of this follow button here. And then in our user cell class, we also have the action handler for that follow button. So we are gonna be implementing a protocol to handle the action for tapping that follow button. And the reason why is in these view classes, we don't wanna implement any real functionality into the view class. It should really just be a file containing all of um, our view components. So we don't want to implement any real action handling in this, especially because if you were doing this in a real app, like if this were actually Instagram, this action handler involves contacting an API, right? It would be setting some database values in, um, in your backend based on whether or not a user's followed or not, or what happens when you hit that button. So we want all that stuff to be handled in our view controller file, right? That helps us conform to or adhere to that model view controller system where the controller handles all those actions for the view. But it gets tricky because uh, the action handler is in this handle follow tap uh, or the action handler is in our view class. And so we wanna handle that code or write that code in our controller. So we're gonna be using a protocol to 
uh, sort of link those two view controllers together so that they can work, so that this method can work. So what we're gonna do is hop into your user cell class and above the class declaration, we're gonna create this protocol. And the naming convention is just to say uh, whatever the class name is and then just add delegate to the end of it. So we're gonna say user cell delegate. Oops, and then open close bracket. So we just need to implement one function and that function is going to be the uh, function to follow or unfollow our users. So let's just call this func on follow cat. And we'll just uh, create it with, an, with no parameters for now. We're gonna be adding something in here in a little bit. So now what we need to do is, now that we have this protocol, we can create a delegate that is of this type. So we'll see what that looks like right here. So we're gonna say var delegate, and it's gonna be of type user cell delegate. Okay, so now through the use of this delegate, we can access this function. So in our handler, we are gonna go down here and say delegate dot on follow tap. So again, really quick guys, we declared this protocol, it's called user cell delegate. It has one function and we create this delegate variable so we can access that function. And we just have to make sure that that uh, delegate variable is of the same type as our protocol. And then down here, we implement that, um, basically this is saying uh, when you hit that follow button, I want this on follow tap function to get executed, right? So we're gonna be writing this on follow tap function in our view controller. So let's go into our view controller file, create another extension for view controller. And this view controller is going to conform to that protocol. So it's going to say uh, user cell delegate. And it's gonna require us to implement that function. So it says, right now we get an error and it says view controller does not conform to protocol user cell delegate. So essentially what a protocol is, is that we, uh, sorry, when we create this, we're saying whatever uh, class we have that conforms to this protocol has to implement this function. So it's really just like a blueprint or uh, like a list of requirements essentially that um, any controller that conforms to that protocol has to uh, adhere to all of the methods that are within that protocol. So we can fix that by just hitting this and it's gonna implement that function for us. And now what we're gonna do is write the code to that we want to, uh, or write the list of instructions essentially, or the code that we want to execute when that follow button is tapped. So right now let's just say print handle follow tap to see if this is working. And we created this delegate, and now we need to make sure that we actually give it a value, right? Or we, we need to set that delegate because right now it's empty, which is why we make it optional to start out with. So we do that by going into our cell for row at function and saying cell.delegate equals self. And we say self because this view controller conforms to that protocol. So when we set that delegate, we can say self refer refers to this view controller class. Because if we conform to that protocol, this is going to be allowed. So once we set that delegate and then we go down here and we say delegate.onFollowTap, it's going to go into our view controller file and execute this code here. And then um, everything's gonna be working nicely or adhere to this model view controller system. All right, so let's run our code and see if this is working. So we hit this and it says handle follow tapped, right? Which is exactly what we want. So. Now we've successfully linked these two view controllers together. It solves that problem, right? Where the action handler is in one class, but we want the code to be written in another class. So now that we've done that, um, let's go ahead and actually configure these follow buttons to work. Um, so let's go here. And I'm gonna create an extension for our UI button. And it's gonna look like this. And we'll see how this is used to uh, make this work. Funk, uh, just call it configure. Let's say did follow, which is a boolean variable. Oops. Okay. 
So I'm just going to copy and paste this code really quickly and go through it with you guys. So what we're doing here is we're going to call on this uh, configure function through our button to uh, configure that follow button based on whether or not a user um, is followed or not followed. So let's go ahead and see how this is implemented really quick. Uh, and this is just uh, really quickly, guys, just configuring the attributes of the button. So like we're saying if the, uh, we're following them, then we want to set the title to following, set the title color to black, border width, all that stuff. So it's uh, pretty simple. Um, it's just some UI stuff, really. So now when we go here, um, we need to be able to access this follow or components in our cell through our view controller when we uh, execute this function. So what we need to do is add a parameter in here to make this work. So we're gonna go up, uh, sorry, back to our user cell. And we're just gonna give this a, an input parameter. And it's gonna look like this. So uh, it's gonna be, up to, we're gonna say, give me a cell that's of type user cell, which is this class here. And what that's gonna do is give us access to all the attributes associated with this cell. So let's go back into our view controller. And if we were to build our project now, we'd get an error because this, this uh, controller doesn't conform to the protocol anymore because we have that input parameter now. So just go ahead and let's implement that guy here. So now what we can do is uh, we can access all, we can access this uh, follow button now through the use of this uh, cell that we have here. So let's go ahead and see what we need to do to implement this. So we're gonna say guard let user equals cell dot user. So let's hop back into our cell real quick. We have this user variable, right, that we are setting for each cell. So because we passed the cell in, we have access to this user uh, variable now. So we wanna check and uh, make sure that that user exists before we go any further. So now we're gonna say if user dot is followed and else. So is followed is a property that we have in our user struct. It's this guy here. So is followed always starts out as false. Um, that's how we set our code up. Let's go here. And when we constructed our users, we set that guy to false there. So basically we we're saying if the user is already followed, then here we would want to unfollow. And then if they're not followed, then we want to follow. So this is pretty cool. Um, right now we're gonna say sell dot follow button dot configure did follow and we're gonna say false. And then we're gonna just copy and paste this line of code down here. And then say true. So because we wrote that extension of our UI button, um, this follow button is obviously a UI button and we have access to that function there. And we have, um, this did follow guy that just determines whether or not the user is getting followed or unfollowed, and it configures the follow button based on that. So if we go back here, um, we notice that if did follow is true, it does this. If it's not, it does this. So that's all looking pretty good. Now, um, what we need to do is let's just run our code and see how this is looking now. Uh, build failed. Let's see why. Oh, um, so this is important as well. So when we execute, um, this function through the use of our delegate, we need to make sure that it uh, it now takes in that uh, parameter. So we say cell self, right? Because this is our this is our cell class, so we need to give it uh, our function a cell that is of type user cell here. So when we do this, we just uh, say that self because that's uh, what this class is. Our, this is our user cell class, so. We have use of that through that self guy right there. So now we can go ahead and run our code and it's all going to start working pretty nicely. So we go there and we notice that we can follow all of our users like this, but we notice that we can't unfollow them, right? And that's because we need to, once we click this, we need to set um, our user is followed guide to true. So let's hop back into this function in our view controller. And we're just at the end of this, after this if block here, and this if this control flow, just say cell dot user dot is followed equals the opposite of user dot is followed. So basically this is saying, uh, um, after it goes through this control flow and configures the follow button, it's going to 
um, access the user um, in that particular cell and it's going to set that value based on uh, the opposite of what it was before. So basically if the user was followed and we unfollow them, it changes that value to uh, false or true or whatever it has to be. So now we notice that we can follow and unfollow um, a user. So basically what's happening is, let's go through this function really quickly. Um, it's saying if the user's followed, then we're gonna unfollow them. So that's not the case because all the users are uh, not followed to start out with. So it's gonna hit this block here. So it's gonna say configure that follow button um, under the, the follow you know, uh, conditions. And then when it gets here, it's gonna say, okay, that user started out is false, right? So it's gonna say, or the is followed guy started out as false. So followed now equals the opposite of what it started out as. So at first it was false, then it goes to true, and it sets that um, user is followed parameter to uh, the opposite of what it started out as. So in this case, it starts out as false. Then when we hit that, it's now user is followed as true in that cell. And then it, we can just go back and forth through there. So. Um, that's the application there, guys. Um, I'm really just going to go through um, the theory behind the protocol one more time. And before we do that, I want to uh, show you guys a different example of when a protocol is used. So um, in this Pokedex application that I have, um, so like in this situation, it wasn't absolutely necessary to implement that protocol. We could have just uh, written the code. Um, all that code in this function here and the project would have worked just fine it wasn't it's not absolutely necessary in this situation it was just sort of what we did to uh, conform to the model view controller uh, system where we want all of the code for that handling uh, the, the action handling to be written in our controller file so if like we have to reach out to an api or where we configure this button it's all supposed to be in our controller file, but technically it doesn't have to be. It just, it's just how um, we're supposed to write the code under that architecture. But a situation where the use of a protocol is necessary, um, where our code wouldn't work if we tried to do it using the incorrect method or not following the view controller, the model view controller system, is a situation like this. So um, in each one of these, each one of these guys represents is a is a collection view cell, and we long press, we have a long press functionality implemented there where we, uh, you long press down and it implements this cool like pop-up animation. So we have to use a protocol to do this because let me uh, actually bring this code over here. So let's see, Pokedex cell. So uh, we have the same uh, situation going on here. Uh, we have a protocol and that protocol is used to present that info view, right? And then we have this delegate guy here, just like we did in our last project and uh, or our project that we're doing now. And then this is our action handler, right? Where we present that info view. Well, because that info view is being presented on top of the main view controller, we actually wouldn't be able to do this in our cell class. The cell class doesn't have the functionality to present something, right? So only the view controller class has the ability to present something, whether it's a, a new view controller, whether it's a, like a UI view like this, um, only the view controller class has that ability. So we have to implement a protocol in order to write um, or in order to like present that uh, info view on top of our, our main view. So this is our Pokedex controller here. And if we go down here to uh, this is the present info view function. So if you tried to implement this in your cell class, it would not work. So that's that's a, an example of where a protocol is actually necessary to implement. So um, even if you're not running into a situation where it's necessary to implement the protocol, just to stick to the model view controller principles or systems, even the MVVM architecture framework, um, it's important to implement protocols in that way, right? So. Um, I'm going to go over the theory of it one more time with you guys and then I'll call this video here because I know it's getting a little long. So in our user cell class, we implement this protocol. And again, a protocol is essentially just, let's go back to this definition, a blueprint of methods, properties, and other requirements that suit a particular task or piece of functionality. It can be adopted by a class, structure, or enumeration, blah, blah, blah. Um, any type that satisfies the requirements of a protocol is said to conform to that protocol. So um oops wrong project 
So when we create this protocol, any class that conforms to that protocol, in this case is our view controller, has to implement whatever methods or properties are contained within this protocol. So when we go here and we conform to this protocol through this, so colon user cell delegate, and this is used all the time, right? So this UI table view controller, this is essentially conforming to, a, the same thing as conforming to a protocol. Um, these are the functions that you implement through the UI table view controller data source or delegate protocol, right? It's the same concept or process. So I'm sure you guys have used that before as well. So in this case, it's just, um, this is uh, our protocol that we're conforming to. It's a custom one. And then um, this is the function that we have to conform to. And then we write all the code that we want that function to execute within um, our blocks here. So let's go back to our user cell. In order to connect the two things or essentially bridge the two controllers, we create this delegate, which conforms to or is of this uh, type of the protocol that we created. So through use of this delegate, we have access to this function. So that's why when we're down here in our action handler, we can call that function. So when we call that function, it then goes to the view controller class, finds the, the, uh, the actual code that that function executes and goes through line by line and executes that code for us in our view controller class. So it solves that problem of us having to, um, having an action handler and having our UI element like our button in our cell class and then needing to write the code to execute it in our main controller class or the controller that contains that cell. So, and we added this parameter in here, guys, because we need to change how this follow button looks and the uh, follow button is declared in our cell class. So we don't have access to that uh, stuff in our view controller class, right? So we need to implement this uh, parameter here so that through the, the use of this cell input parameter, we can then access all of the, uh, the uh, properties that are associated with that cell. So like we look at the user and we also looked at the follow button. And then we actually went through and changed um, a property about each cell's user when we hit this button. So it's important to understand like how to implement that as well. So that's my uh, explanation on protocols, guys. I hope that makes sense. I know it's a confusing topic, um, but I hope I got all the points across you know, pretty clearly. Um, it's really important to understand this stuff, especially at the professional level. If you guys ever want to like, advance your iOS development skills uh, to a professional career, um, you need to understand how to use protocols and how to implement them, how they work, so on and so forth, because they're used all the time in Swift. So I uh, hope you guys like that video. Uh, any constructive feedback in the comments is welcome. Make sure you hit subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.